seeing a dagger pointed at Japan's throat, the naval base at Pearl Harbor was bombed by the Japanese. It was just before 8 a.m. when hundreds of Japanese fighter planes wrecked havoc on the base. Nearly 20 vessels, including eight battleships, were destroyed, as well as over 300 airplanes. Over 2,400 men died in the attack along with another 1,000 wounded. The day after the attack, President Roosevelt opted to declare war on Japan. So, could you just describe to me uh, what you saw and what happened during Pearl Harbor? Yeah, um, I was just doing my job as a maintenance worker on the USS Arizona. I was, I was doing toilets, that was a pretty bad day. And then, I just remember a loud noise. And it got louder and louder and louder until I realized that everyone around me was dying. I had to swim away from the ship. I almost lost my life too. I swam away and I made it, but I lost many people I loved, so that was terrible. <laughs> After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, General James H. Doolittle led a bombing raid to Tokyo, Japan's capital. This was America's first attack on the Japanese mainland, and it was rather unsuccessful. The 16 ships involved dropped their bombs, but then had to crash land in China and the USSR. Unfortunately, most of the crew didn't make it back alive, but Doolittle himself did, and continued to serve through the Cold War. This attack, while unsuccessful, gave the United States a huge morale boost after the terrible Pearl Harbor attack. On April 9, 1942, Major General Edward King surrendered to the Japanese after a bloody battle in the Philippines. This surrender basically allowed the 78,000 soldiers consisting of 12,000 American and 66,000 Filipino to be captured and taken as prisoners of war. Soon after, the prisoners were led 55 miles from the tip of the Bataan Peninsula to a prison camp in San Fernando. On this difficult trek, 5,000 Filipinos and 600 Americans died due to the extreme brutality and of the Japanese forces. The prisoners were beaten, starved, and kicked. If a prisoner became too weak to walk, they were bayoneted. This march later became known as the Bataan Death March. After they had finally reached the prison camp, an additional 16,000 Filipinos and 1,000 Americans died from mistreatment, starvation, and disease. The next chapter of the war begins on June 3, 1942, when Japan planned to attack Midway, an island near the center of the Pacific. However, the U.S. cleverly intercepted the Japanese code. This battle started when Japan bombed the island of Midway, but the U.S. was able to counter with dive bombers, and by the end, the U.S. had destroyed three of Japan's heavy carriers and one cruiser. By June 4th into the 5th, Japan was retreating, without ever attempting to reach any land at Midway. This caused a turning point in the war. For being a very small island, less than 10 square miles, Iwo Jima had quite a bit of importance to both sides. It was in reach of Japan, making it easy for U.S. bombers to make it there after bombing the mainland. The battle started on February 19th and lasted until the 26th of March in 1945. The beginning of the battle went poorly for the Americans, led by General Douglas MacArthur, but by the 23rd of February, they had raised the flag at Mount... Much before the U.S. had gotten involved in World War II, in 1940, the U.S. government started funding the development of atomic weapons. This would come into play as by 1945, as the war was beginning to come to a close, the Manhattan Project had held successful tests of atomic bombs. Japan was on the defensive, but had not surrendered, so the topic was brought to President Truman of dropping atomic bombs on Japan to end the war. His advisors said invading Japan was not a good option, as it risked losing too many men. General Douglas MacArthur, who led the U.S. to many victories in the Pacific, along with many other top military commanders, supported the bombings. So on August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb, named Little Boy, 
was dropped by the crew on Enola Gay on Hiroshima at 8.15 a.m., immediately killing 80,000 people and destroying 90% of the city. But Japan did not immediately surrender after the bombing. The U.S. on August 9th then proceeded to drop another bomb named Fat Man. This time, the crew on Boxcar dropped the atomic bomb on Nagasaki at 11.02 a.m. With, with similar results. Okay, so, as an American citizen, what is your stance on the attacks at Hiroshima and Nagasaki? I know it won the war and everything, and, you know, as U.S. citizens, we should be ecstatic about that that happened, but just the way that we just destroyed uh, uh, Hiroshima and everything is just so devastating. The, the whole place is gone. So many people have died, and I'm sure in years to come, I think the U.S. is going to really regret what happened. In reply to the message forwarded to that government by the Secretary of State on August 11th, I deem this reply a full acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration, which specifies the unconditional surrender of Japan. After both of these destructive bombs were dropped, Japan finally surrendered on August 5, 1945, marking the end of World War II.